One of the most requested videos I've gotten based on my YouTube comments is to cover stocks that offer high dividend yields and at the same time are relatively inexpensive. And I can see where a lot of people are coming from because if you use a brokerage platform that doesn't allow you to buy fractional shares of stocks, then buying a few shares of companies like WP Carry or Realty Income is now a pretty sizable investment given just how much these stocks have grown in share price. In fact, both of these holdings, in my opinion, have ballooned so much that I'm not planning on buying any more shares until hopefully the share price goes back down. I also understand that buying cheaper stocks is also just more appealing for a couple of reasons. For example, the amount of money it would cost to buy one share of WP Carry can actually buy you 18 shares of a $5 stock. That alone feels better than owning just one share, even if the dividend amount were to be the exact same. If you're new to dividend or income investing and you want to just test the waters with a relatively inexpensive holding, then that's another reason why cheaper stocks might be more appealing to you. Or maybe you're just a regular dividend growth investor who maybe just wants to add a couple of small holdings to your portfolio that'll bump up its average yield. But it's also important to keep in mind that cheaper high yielding stocks usually means that there's a more elevated risk in owning them. They could be cheaper because they're a much smaller company compared to other stocks in the same sector, but there's also a lot of companies that are trading at near penny level prices because they're extremely risky. Orchid Island is a famous example that a lot of newer income and dividend growth investors get seduced into buying. They see the cheap share price and the high dividend yield and they decide to buy shares but don't seem to be aware of the huge price declines and the dividend cuts over the years. So in today's video I wanted to cover some high yielding dividend stocks that I currently hold in my portfolio that offer exceptionally high yields and are all under $10 per share as of the making of this video. As I'll go into more detail, I feel particularly good about these holdings even though all of them carry some amount of risk, but one of them in particular I think could be especially risky in the months ahead. But as always, be sure to do your own research and come to your own conclusion before investing in any of these holdings. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. The first company we're going to take a look at is Bearings BDC, ticker symbol BBDC. This is a business development company that invests primarily in senior secured loans, first lien debt, unit tranche, second lien debt, and equity co-investments. They specifically like to invest in companies with an EBITDA of 10 to $75 million and in the manufacturing, distribution, business services, and transportation sectors. They've been publicly listed since 2007, and they're actually one of only a handful of BDCs that were publicly traded before the financial crisis. Their stock currently offers a dividend yield of 9.76%, and they pay dividends quarterly. If we expand the share price performance of this stock, we can see that it's been on quite a roller coaster ride since their IPO, but there is a history to this company that I didn't touch on in previous videos. You can see between 2007 and 2013, the share price of BBDC grew by almost 100%, but then it slowly declined until 2017, and between 2017 and today, the share price is basically flatlined. During this time when their stock was going down, the dividends were also being cut quite a few times. So what explains this stock's downfall and its dividend cuts? When this business development company first launched back in 2007, it wasn't owned by Bearings. It was actually owned by a company called Triangle Capital Corporation, and in 2018, Bearings took it over. So Bearings basically brought in a new, and in my opinion, a much better management team. So looking at their stock's past performance and dividend distributions, in my opinion, I think it's fair to basically ignore a lot of what happened before 2018 because Bearings didn't actually own BBDC back then. But over the last four years, this company has really been turning things around. For one thing, they've been able to grow their dividend by a pretty impressive amount since December of 2018. You can see they were growing it every quarter until the COVID pandemic where they maintained a 16 cent per share dividend and then once they recovered they were able to keep growing it and now they pay 24 cents per share. In almost three years they've been able to double their dividend distributions which I hope they'll be able to keep doing. One metric that I found particularly interesting about this stock was its institutional ownership percentage. According to NASDAQ, a whopping 47.03% of all outstanding shares of this company are owned by institutions. This means that nearly half of all shares are owned by pension funds, mutual funds, and other finance companies and organizations including endowments, insurance companies, and investment firms. I know some people don't like the idea that a company could be so largely controlled by large institutions, but it's important to remember that these organizations seek stability. The investment experts and managers at these companies seek investments that will provide them with stability and they seem to be really confident with this stock. Their portfolio as of first quarter 2022 is roughly $2.4 billion, which makes them one of the larger business development companies in this sector, but they're by no means the largest. To put that into perspective, the largest BDC, which is Aries Capital, has a portfolio value of $21.2 billion. Some of the largest sectors in their loan portfolio include business services, finance, and high-tech industries. It doesn't appear to be as well diversified as Main Street Capitals or some other BDCs out there, but it's decent in my opinion. First lien debt only makes up 64.7% of their debt in terms of seniority, which again, I think is decent. It's not as good as some other business development companies like Alrock, but it's still good. 
to summarize, I think Bearings BDC could be described as a pretty decent pick. I don't see it outperforming other companies in this sector, but I think it's a decent pick for the investor looking for another holding to provide them with a large amount of dividends. It makes up a pretty small portion of my portfolio because in terms of BDCs, there's just a lot of other companies out there that I like more, including Aries Capital, Main Street Capital, Al Rock Capital, and Pennant Park Floating Rate Capital to name a few. We'll have to wait and see if they'll be able to keep growing those dividends in the year ahead. The next stock we're going to take a look at is Sachem Capital Corporation, ticker symbol SACH. This company is involved in the originating, underwriting, servicing, and managing of a portfolio of short-term loans secured by first mortgage liens on real estate property located primarily in northeastern United States and Florida. They fund the acquisition, renovation, development, and improvement of residential or commercial properties. Sachem offers bridge loans and also fix and flip loans, which are used by house flippers. They're a mortgage REIT that seeks to protect and preserve their invested capital in a manner that would provide attractive risk-adjusted returns primarily through dividend distributions. SACH currently offers an extremely high dividend yield of almost 10% and they pay dividends on a quarterly basis. Last month the company announced that they were increasing their dividend distribution by 17% to now 14 cents per share. Since their IPO in 2017, the stock hasn't really seen much action in terms of its share price. Originally trading at $5 per share at their launch, their share price has moved as high as $6.55 to as low as $1.68 during the COVID crash. But today it's trading roughly at its original price, but remember that massive dividend yield helps make up for lackluster share price performance. This is the riskiest stock we're going to take a look at today, in my opinion, for a few reasons. Sachems and MREIT, which are by nature much riskier than other types of high yield investments. They're also one of the smallest MREITs out there when compared to similar companies in terms of market cap. Plus, they did have to go a quarter in 2020 without paying a dividend because of the pandemic. But at the same time, this is also a company that's been experiencing a good amount of growth in their financials. Their loan portfolio has grown to over $353 million as of March of this year, which is significantly more than $33.8 million that they had at the end of 2016. They also expanded their operations to include projects in 15 states compared to only investing in the state of Connecticut like they originally were. But now we need to highlight where this company could experience some hardships going forward. Historically, this is a company that's benefited from lower interest rates. Now that the cost of borrowing has been going up, it's obviously worth taking into account before making an investment decision. Looking at their loan products, it's clear that the majority of what this company provides financing for could be impacted by rising interest rates and home prices starting to stabilize. If there is one good thing, it's that Sachem's loans are very short term. For example, bridge loans can be as short as a few weeks or up to about a year, and fix and flip loans are also relatively short, so loan defaults are less likely than with other longer term loans. As previously mentioned, their financial statements have continued to report growth up to this point, with year over year growth and net interest income in their portfolio. Over on their balance sheet, we can see that their book value per share is currently at $5.61. This is quite a bit more than just a few quarters ago. Back in March of 2021, for example, their book value per share was only $3.77, which is a pretty sizable gain in just a little over a year. Because their book value is at $5.61, this indicates that this stock is currently trading at a discount, seeing that it's still hovering below $5 per share as of the making of this video. Ultimately, I plan to remain invested in this stock and I have my dividends being reinvested despite what I think could be a challenging period for them. I do think that they're safer than other mortgage REITs because they issue their own loans and simply don't invest in pools of loans like Orchid Island or Armor Residential does. Sachem touts having an experienced management team that's able to well manage their investment portfolio, so we'll really have to see how well they actually do. This is a period in my opinion where the rubber will definitely need to meet the road, but the fact that the share price has remained stable over the last 5 or 6 months shows that investors aren't running for the hills at this point. This last cheap stock that I've been invested in for a while and have been pretty happy about is Oak Tree Specialty Lending Corporation, ticker symbol OCSL. They're a specialty finance corporation dedicated to providing customized one-stop credit solutions to companies with limited access to public or syndicated capital markets. Oaktree seeks to generate current income and capital appreciation by providing companies with flexible and innovative finance solutions including first and second lien loans, unsecured and mezzanine loans, and preferred equity. They invest in companies with an enterprise value between $20 million and $150 million and an EBITDA between $3 million and $50 million. The story of Oaktree Specialty Lending is actually pretty similar to Bearings BDC. Back when this company had their IPO in 2008, it started at around $11 per share and for a few years it had a flatlining share price. But then starting in late 2012, the company started going on a downward trend both in share price and dividend distributions. It continued all the way until about 2019 when Brookfield, which is a large Canadian asset manager, stepped in and acquired 61.2% of the company. Once Brookfield took over in September of that year, you can see that the share price rose over 40% up until 2022 when the whole market started to fall. 
So just like with Bearings BDC, I really don't pay much attention to the share price performance before 2019 before Brookfield showed up. Today their stock offers a nice 9.38% dividend yield to shareholders and they pay quarterly. Since Brookfield took the reins of Oak Tree, they've done a great job in growing their dividend distributions. This is extremely similar to Bearings BDC, who, if you remember, also grew their dividend in a very similar pattern. There's no guarantee this growth will last, especially if we're headed for a recession, but it's been a great ride up to this point. On their website, it says they currently have a $2.6 billion investment portfolio, and they're invested in 146 different companies as of March of this year. 89% of their debt portfolio is made up of floating rate loans, which means that as interest rates go up, Oak Tree will be able to earn more revenue from their investments as long as none of their borrowers default. Fortunately, 69% of their debt is first lien debt, which means that if any company they invest in fails, Oak Tree is going to be the first in line for repayment if the company's assets need to be liquidated. When it comes to their investment portfolio, I think it's pretty stellar when compared to a lot of other BDCs. They hold investments in a lot of sectors that are more recession-proof, with software, healthcare, data processing, and machinery making up a large part of it. They aren't heavily invested in sectors like restaurants, travel, hotel and leisure, and those sorts of companies that tend to offer good returns at times, but are often more susceptible to struggle during recessions. Out of the three companies we've looked at today, this one is my personal favorite, and I own more shares of Oak Tree than the other two stocks we've looked at. And that's going to conclude our look at stocks that I currently hold in my portfolio that are currently priced at less than $10 per share. As I mentioned, there are risks involved with these holdings, especially with Sachem Capital in my opinion. Remember to always perform your own research and due diligence before investing in anything. I don't suggest investing in any of these companies for yourself unless you've looked into it and you've come to your own conclusion that these stocks are worth holding and you're okay with the risks. And that's going to conclude today's video. Thank you all so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. If you found this video informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up below and also subscribe to the channel if you want to see more high yield dividend investing strategy videos. It would just let me know that there's enough people out there who want this kind of content and I'll continue to provide you all with that content. Alright, thanks again guys so much for watching and until next time, take care.